It's not long until the end of the year, and many matric learners are counting down the days until they finish their final exams. But those who wrote the matric maths paper 2 exam last week are anxious about their results. They got stuck on question 5. Turns out it was impossible to solve. I'm Catherine Rice, a journalist for News24's multimedia department, and you're listening to The Story. This week, we're talking about the infamous unsolvable maths question and what the education department plans to do about it. We're talking to News24 reporter Nicole McCain, and later on, we'll be talking to Dr. Marfu Rakometsi, who is the CEO of quality assurance body Umalusi. Nicole, tell us about Maths Paper 2 and exactly what the problem was. So there appears to have been a problem in the question. It's a technical problem that I can't explain to you with my limited maths knowledge. But it looks to us as if there was simply a typo made, a minus when there should have been a plus, a incorrect number down in the question. And with maths, something small like that can completely change the equation. So students arrived at the paper had a look at the question and were not able to come up with a solution based on what was written down. What has the response been from parents and learners? I mean, I'm the mother of a matric pupil and I can imagine they were furious. There's been quite a lot of reaction and of course a lot of people felt very stressed in that moment. You can imagine the stakes of writing a matric paper and coming across a question and not being sure how to approach it. It would throw almost anybody off their game. And these are pupils who've spent hours and hours studying to really know the risks that are involved in not doing well in the exams. Um, So it has had quite a a big effect on people. There's increased stress levels. A lot of pupils and parents have said that they're really upset. They would expect more from the education department in terms of checking papers to make sure that the questions are correct. And they've also had questions about what happens now. How does this affect the marks? Will pupils have any sort of recourse in terms of the time that they might have lost struggling with this question, trying to figure out what they were doing wrong and not realizing that it was actually within the question that the fault lies? What has the response been from the education department? How could this have happened? We're not sure at this stage where the error slipped in. We assume that it would have been somewhere between setting the paper and having it printed, either that, like I said, a typo slipped in somewhere Um, or that whoever checked the paper just simply missed that mistake. The education department doesn't seem very alarmed by this. Um, This is not the first time that there has been a mistake in a matric paper. It probably won't be the last either. It's human error. And the education department says they will simply assess how pupils responded to the question. If there is a case, like in mathematics, where learners get method marks, so when you show your calculations, you get marks for having correct calculations, even if the answer is wrong. If they find that the majority of learners have approached it that way and that it really hasn't affected the overall mark, they might choose to leave the question in. But what is the most likely outcome is that they'll simply subtract the number of marks for that question from the total. So instead of being marked out of 150, the paper will be marked out of 143. The department has also said that they will do an assessment to see how learners responded. If they feel that it caused a lot of stress and learners might have lost time, they could adjust the marks upward by a percentage or two. When will there be clarity on how the paper will be marked? So there is quite a long process that follows the writing of the papers. Um, We are looking at several meetings that will need to take place for us to have an actual answer. There is a meeting that's done between markers and representatives of the department and Umalusi, which is the quality assurance body. And they work through each paper. They take it in a staggered approach as the paper's finished and the marking processes start. They moderate every single paper and make these assessments to see where learners might not have done well through no fault of their own, either because the question was, in this case, incorrect or, you know, perhaps outside of the scope of the work that they had covered. So in those cases recommendations will be made through to the department and Umalusi. They will then take all of these under advisement and a decision will be made. But we are realistically looking for that process to be completed probably sometime in early January. 
So still a bit of a wait and I'm sure a lot of anxiety for those matric learners. Thank you so much for your time. That was Nicole McCain, News24 reporter. We're now joined by the CEO of Umalusi, Dr. Mafu Rakometsi. Dr. Rakometsi, Umalusi gives the final approval of all papers. So what happened in this case? Was it a misprint or human error? We, we are still trying to establish what uh, created the problem. Uh, like you say, the papers are said by the Department of Basic Education. And uh, there you've got uh, not only one examiner, you've got uh, a panel of examiners. And then still in the department, you've got uh, internal moderators uh, who are also constituted in the in a panel. And uh, beyond that, the papers are brought to Malusi for Malusi uh, external moderators to look at the papers and give them the final uh, stamp of approval. Now, it is not clear as to stand where the mistake happened, whether with the paper having gone through so many hands, uh, a mistake could have happened at a particular stage. And beyond that, the papers have to be printed. And we are still not sure, we still have to establish the fact, whether at the point of printing, that's where the error occurred, uh, typesetting and printing. So we'll investigate and in due course, we'll let the, the South Africans know what happened here and uh, what remedial measures we are taking. What happens now in terms of how this paper will be marked? Many are concerned that the overall performance of some learners would have been affected. They, we are going to deal with this uh, matter at two levels. Uh, uh, yesterday and today, there was um, a, a memorandum discussion where the marking guidelines were discussed. What our recommendation as Uma Lucy has been that the seven marks should be discard, discarded and the, there should be a recalculation that excludes the seven marks so that we should uh, allow every learner to, to be on the level to play in field in terms of the seven marks. However, we realize, we realize that uh, also with the sum being, being wrong, it might have uh, thrown off some learners even as they went to other questions because of trauma and anxiety. That will be dealt when we deal with standardization. Standardization is going to tell us that in terms of, you know, the standardization rules, the learners of this year are performing badly. And what are we attributing the bad performance uh, to? They may do well, but where they do well, we say, is this the best that they could have gotten? And why? Where they do badly, we say, why did they do badly? Is it because they were traumatized by, by that section of the paper? And that will be in comparison with the average of the past five years. So we'll cross that bridge early in January when the marks will be standardized. And at the time when we'll be approving the results, we should be able to give the South Africans a full picture. In other words, we are still going to be dealing with a process. It's marking guidelines, discussion, it's marking, it is standardization, it is the investigation going on to say at what point did the error creep in. And once we have a holistic picture, which is not a picture that you can get in one day or in one week or in one month, we'll be able to give direction clearly to South Africans in a very clear manner to say what has happened and how are we dealing with the matter. Is this an issue that's happened before or is this a very rare occurrence? It, it is a very rare occurrence, uh, but it has happened before. We are running a very new system that is um, having about 800,000 learners to a million learners. The papers are written from Cape Town to Messina, from Springbok to Empangin, Richards Bay. So it, it is a huge system. And in a huge system like this, mistakes are bound to happen once in a while. And we don't condone the, the mistakes happening. We don't want to allow that. We have to run a perfect system. That is why we want to get to the bottom of the problem to see what happened this time around. Does Umalusi have plans to change its systems in terms of signing off or giving final approval for final matric exams? Will you use more moderators to try and prevent this from happening again? Like I said, we're going to do an investigation. And beyond the investigation, we'll announce the remedial measures that we're taking for this current cohort of learners and for our future planning. So as to instant, we're not able to make a clear pronouncement as to what has to change. Uh, because we'll be shooting from the hip. We have to investigate and get to the bottom of the problem first before we can say these are the matching orders.
Well, thank you so much for your time. That was Dr. Mafu Rakometsi, CEO of Quality Assurance Body Umalusi. That's all we have time for this week. I'm Catherine Rice, and you've been listening to The Story. Join us again next week.